All right, it's seven o'clock, so I will call the meeting to order. Um, does anybody have a reflection to offer? I don't. I do. I do. Thank you. Somehow I think these reflections are kind of important to do. I don't like it, but this is a very small one, very min a minimalist uh, reflection. And it's brought to us through the wonders of the internet. This is a quote. Let's see if you can guess where this quote is from. <laughs> Until you dig a hole, you plant a tree, you water it and make it survive, you haven't done a thing. You were just talking. You know who this person was, but you may not know her name. Her name is Wangari Mathai, a Kenyan woman. Peace Prize winner. Nobel Peace Prize winner. She won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2004. And she is the first African woman to win that prize. And she is credited with starting the uh, the Green Belt Movement in Kenya. And I think it's spread beyond Kenya as well. I remember being very impressed learning about her and just stumbled upon this quote. Let me just read it again. Until you dig a hole, you plant a tree, you water it and make it survive. You haven't done a thing. You're just talking. Dick, you've done some things. <laughs> Dick's planted lots of trees. All right. Introductions. Do we need to do introductions for the benefit of anybody who might watch the tape or just I don't know. Mark, you've done a lot more of these meetings than I have. Not pre-board meetings, council meetings. Well, if I'm doing something wrong, let me know. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I think we go around the table just quickly with Sarah and Apes. Anything else? Elizabeth? Oh, I'll start. My name's Elizabeth. I'm the assistant planner with the City of Lake Forest Park. Larry Goldman, uh, City Council Liaison. Uh, Mark Phillips, member of the Tree Board. Doug Sprugel, Vice Chair of the Tree Board. Victoria Futiles, member of the Tree Board. Daisy Spain, member of the Tree Board. And I'm Dick, Stol Dick Olmstead, uh, Chair of the Tree Board. Oops, yeah, okay. That leaves uh, Mr. Hoffman. Is he here? Just leaving that. Okay, we should move on. Yeah. Okay. We, just, we do have a fourth participant now. Sorry. There's the fourth participant in the room. Oh, they're over. Um, might be Mark. Yeah, sure. Promote him again. Uh, promote him again. He, he dropped out just for a second. Uh, he, there were two of him. Oh, no. There we go. One. Now you're here. Should be getting. Back on the screen as a canvas. Oh, well. There, there we, we go. go. <laughs> Apologies, I had to change computers, sign into Zoom again. Now it works. Um, Mark Hoffman, Community Development Director. Thank you. Okay, adoption of the agenda. Is there anything to be added to the agenda? Take it out. Um, let's see, there was there was a last minute uh, possibility from uh, AC about... Uh, but I would just include yeah. that the question of the press release in the Arbor Day. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Why well, move we adopt this agenda? Second. Uh, all in favor, I guess. Aye. Okay. Um, approve the minutes. I wasn't here, so I don't know if they're good or not. Is there any problems with the minutes? I didn't see any problems. I move we adopt the minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. So, so adopted. Okay. Now would be the time for public comments, but we don't appear to have any public. So I guess we can move on. Um, communication. I think that's where we get <laughs> comments from city council. I, I can't recall what we do in communication. 
Yeah. Um, it's often if there are news or announcements that would be uh, to the board, like any word on the urban forest planner search or something like that. There is, yes. Uh, good news. Drew Morris is uh, the top candidate. She's accepted. She, her start date is March 18th. She's going to spend a day or two with our IT crew and our human resources and then get right at tree permits and our code uh, and support for this tree board. She comes to us from Bainbridge Island most recently for the last two years. Certified arborists, lots of experience, um, but uh, very well suited uh, to the municipal portion, uh, hence the title urban forest planner. So permitting, project review, retention, canopy reports, um, highly qualified. So we're lucky to have her. Will she be but working four days a week here in these offices? It, or? It's 30 hours. Uh, as far as the job description goes. So I imagine that when we talk the first week, it'll be 30 hours plus tree board as a night meeting. So four days, probably one remote, um, but the idea being most of the 30 hours being in office at City Hall, out in the field, looking at projects and sites. Great. Great. Uh, thanks, that's really good news, it's been a long time. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Uh, tree board work plan. Well, I'm sorry, I'm gonna, I don't know, this is probably where I would talk. Um, I don't have anything specific from the council since the tree board presented at the last council meeting, but I do want to just flag one thing. Um, just remind you about the OPMA, the Open Public Meeting Act. Um, email is really best as, if it's reply all. It's really best reserved for scheduling and other sort of formalities. Uh, best to try to keep any sort of content on email to a minimum. Things like if you're planning a press release, that, that that's the sort of thing that's but you know, either I have a committee of three work on that, and then they can communicate as much as they want, or limit it to the in, the, the actual meeting, just to make sure that you're not running the foul of a uh, public meeting act. Well, but there, I mean, something like the uh, the work that, that Victoria has done. Bringing it up, sure. waiting till a meeting and then bringing it up and then looking at it and talking about it is really not very efficient compared. I know, I know. I, I think the, the, the way to get it, I mean, if you don't do reply all, now you do have to be mindful of serial meetings. But if one person you know, can say, hey, here's some factual information, here's documents that I'm going to be talking about at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. And then this is where staff can, can, can really play a role. And that if you have feedback, you can send it to Elizabeth. She can compile that feedback. And that's not a public meeting because it's not a quorum's worth of tree board members. So I think that's probably a better approach that if, if, if you want to say, here's a press release, um, can Elizabeth then collate feedback and then share that with the, the originator? And that way there's some information, but it's not a public meeting. Um, I didn't that, understand even what the OPM rule was. So can you go back a little and give some other um, so Washington law basically says that any meeting, a meeting is a very general term. It could be in person, it could be on Zoom, by phone, by email, by text message. Anything like that counts as a public meeting, and it, if it involves a majority of the board, that is technically a quorum. Action could have been taken, but the public would not have had access. And so the OPMA tries to avoid situations like that where decisions are being made without public knowledge. Now, obviously there was nothing malicious. So I just want to kind of flag that a better approach would either be to have a subcommittee work on it. And if it's only three tree board members, you don't have a quorum, you can meet as much as you want by any means. Um, otherwise, the better, I believe with the city council is have staff. So staff can basically take the role of, here's a proposal, provide feedback to staff members specifically, and then that way there's no committee. Sure. Um, Elizabeth, Mark, did you have anything you wanted to add about that? that uh, pretty much is it. And uh, to clarify the staff part, um, uh, 
we have a little bit more flexibility. And so we can avoid the serial meeting and redistribute or analyze or review materials, whereas the board in a, a non-publicly noticed setting can't as soon as you have a quorum. And, and so we're we're pretty open to facilitating what you may need. Uh, and as soon as the group email goes out and then individual responses, we can collect those as opposed to uh, internal communications amongst the members. And then the preference is to do tree board work in the light of day, or in this instance, the dark of night in a public setting on an agenda. So thank you. Thank you. I have a clarifying question for initial like sending out if I work on outreach materials and want to send them to the whole board do you want me to start that by sending to everyone or do you want me to send it to you and you can send the initial email to everyone do you have a preference or is there a best practice um if you're just presenting factual information as long as there's no reply also it's just moving in one direction that's totally fine Great. so you can say hey Here's the press release I've been working on that I'm going to be presenting at the next tree board meeting. Also, one little, um, the word action does not mean what a lot of people think it means. Um, in Washington law, there's action and there's final action. Final action is when you vote on something. Like if you're going to vote to approve the work plan tonight, that is final action. Action actually means discussion. And so if you are discussing the work plan, that is action. Yeah. That's not the human definition. We <laughs> think action means vote, but action means anything you're doing together. Final action is the vote itself. Both of those are subject to the Public Meeting Act. So okay. even discussions have to be public. That, that's why it can't be by email thread. So it would be helpful if we, we added a reminder at the top of things we send out that they don't reply all. Yep. And the yeah. council yeah. members will do that. They'll say, yeah. you know, hey, here's an article in the Seattle Times for your yeah. information, don't reply all. Yeah. yeah. A couple of comments on that. Um, there's some inefficiency in that because like the kid thing Victoria sent out, we might all have the same comment and all make it separately, which is really more, more efficient to say, yeah, yeah, like Stacey said, and also, mm -hmm. uh, but maybe that's just the way the law yeah. act is written. So that's yeah. the Washington, the Washington state legislature Not had that debate and they said that, yes, you're going to lose efficiency, but it's worth it in order to have more public access. So, so the Washington led state law has made that decision for you. Yeah. Um, I appreciate that our city council is not doing business over private text thread. <laughs> so yes, I, I'm also <laughs> um, something to be mindful of here. If you did have a text thread, your devices could be subject to a public records request. And now all of a sudden your private phone and your tree board, you know, it's all intermingled. So it's, it's best to try to keep those as separate as possible. Just one, yeah. one other comment. I think, well, not you guys, but uh, several of us kind of got out of the habit of ever trying to do that because we would send up to Riley and it would disappear. Well, first of all, we didn't, we just wasn't a Riley for a while. But even when Riley was here, you'd send him the stuff and ask him to pass it on to the tree board and Nothing would happen, but I, Elizabeth has been really quick at getting turnarounds of the uh, the agenda. I mean, we, we've already got for three three agenda packets mm -hmm. in three days, which is really good. So, you know, as long as we can get cooperation from the staff, which we had, um, that will become a much more efficient way to do it. But we just, I, I at least got soured on it in the variety of days. And one note: there'll be three of us, and and so it, whether it's a vacation, an illness. Um, a workload issue. There'll be three of us uh, supporting the tree board in different capacities as soon as Drew starts. So, so hopefully issues like that won't occur, and the quick turnaround um, through staff will, uh, as Eliz Elizabeth is doing, will continue. Great. And one other clarifying question: You mentioned a couple times that if we have a subcommittee of three, we would be fine, but there's only five of us. So uh that is more than half of our board. It, but it's, I, my understanding is it's based on the total membership, which is seven. Got it. Uh, though, actually, it does raise, if there are two vacancies, does that lower mark? Maybe you know this one. If there's only five active board members, can you have a subcommittee of three? I think you were right the first time, Larry, that it's based on the total number of designated positions, whether they're full or not. Because I would agree that that's my intuition says yes that's how I would operate but I'm not an attorney. So. That's the answer I was hoping for so I'll go with it. And uh, 
we, we've been, always considered, and this process has been happening for forever. We've always considered we needed a quorum for regardless of how many people were on the board. Right. And it, it, the quorum is for that. Yes, quorum is based on the number of seats in total. <laughs> Voting is based on a majority of who's here. So if there are only five people in the room, virtually, you only need three votes to approve right. something, but you have to have four people in the room to make it official. Right. Anyway, I think I think the fact that we consider a quorum to be uh, so, four. Yeah, I think a subcommittee of three is fine because that would never be a quorum right. since it's never a majority of seven. Okay. Yeah, and and it's not a prohibition of work. It's just that we have to take added steps, public notice, mm -hmm. call it a special meeting if it, if it's not a regular, you know, um, uh, the annual schedule. So we can we can create opportunities for those discussions and work, um, but we have to do additional notice. How long does that take to to establish that establish a bona fide special meeting? A week or uh, I've done it in a couple of days or in a week. It's based on availability. And what I've learned at Lake Forest Park is that we're not supposed to overlap meetings because we have one Zoom webinar account. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> the policy is that everyone should be able to attend each and every meeting if wanted. And so uh, if you find a time that doesn't overlap that we could use the webinar and that a quorum is available, a couple days, post the agenda 24 hours in advance. Maybe if the policy is two, three days to give the public some awareness, we can include the web. Yeah, Mark's very aware of this because the Planning Commission is having many special meetings over the next few months to work on the comprehensive plan. And I guess maybe that's kind of clear, but the Planning Commission is we're doing a lot of discussing of stuff that really will affect everybody's lives mm -hmm. closely. And we are basically subject to the same rules they are. Anything you wouldn't want them to do in secret or in a, you know, uh, or just by email between among the members, we shouldn't do either. Even though setting up Arbor Day is not, it's critical and important, but it's not, maybe not as important as some of the things the Planning Commission does. Mm -hmm. Or it is, mm -hmm. back to I suppose. Okay. So we accepted the. Yes, you're on to eight work plan. Eight work plan. Eight, okay. The work plan. So you guys talked about this last week, last month, mm -hmm. and is the plan that's attached here? This looks to me like what we talked about. Okay. And I know Richard was typing it up and making it uh, incorporating the discussion we had. This looks like it to me. I can chime in here since this was mostly my uh, doing. So after at the last meeting, I took notes on the margins of my copy of this and uh, incorporated them to the best of my ability in this draft. Um, so what I would like to see tonight is any corrections or additions made that I may not have gotten right or that may have come up since then. And then uh, choose a few... Um, items on here to highlight as uh, priorities for the board in the coming year. What I didn't do is see where I want to put myself in here, so maybe I'll spend a minute doing that. I do have a quick correction. Um, I think on the page six, you talked about the top line resurrect or otherwise engaged heritage tree program combining that with the assessed results of tree inventory study and make recommendations to council on exceptional input. I'm not sure. But maybe we didn't come to final decision on that. So. Yeah, that was a, the, the Heritage Tree Program was one that was sort of kicked around and we didn't really decide what to do with it. Yeah. But, uh, so I lumped it with the champion tree list, which was something that I think there is still an interest in perhaps developing. Oh, got um, it. You did combine it with something. OK, yeah. I see. Yes. I, thanks. Got it. OK. And I think that's very different than uh, the assessing the 
tree inventory, yeah. Yeah. even though yeah. part of that touches on some tree size, which is kind of like champion trees. Yeah, but I think they're different, logically different. Yeah. Any other? One minor. Um, I have one minor note, bottom of page five, staffing the green fair. I'm happy to help with prep for it and have made some materials, but I will not be in town. Okay. We're going to talk about that item uh, yeah. in the agenda. Yep. So yeah, I don't think it, it doesn't apply a commitment on anybody's part. I, you know, I wanted to just so have some you names. You my name and noticed it there. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, I saw a note from you, too, that seemed to indicate that, that you would not be staffing it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll be traveling that week. Okay. Um. Um, there's a couple of bills. There's one spelling error. Um, first page is stay in communication. It's climate, not climate. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. I think that would count as a clerical or a scrivener's error. So I don't, I don't think you need to worry about like, yeah. making a motion to amend. <laughs> Elizabeth, can you uh, make notes of minor things like that and just make those corrections? Yeah. Good. And I don't understand. I didn't, again, I was here for the discussion. The third from the bottom one on the second page, review intern tree removal replacement data project. Oh, was that there? Yeah, that's been hanging on because the several years ago, we had an intern who went through all of the... Uh, tree removal permits and compiled data on, you know, species and size and all of those things that we thought would be of use. And, and I don't think we've ever actually taken it up and done anything with it. So by having your name next to it, you're still interested or willing to uh, explore it a bit further. Yes, I don't even know where the data are. I may ask uh, yeah. Elizabeth to see if she can find that intern's report. If you would make note of that, Elizabeth. We talked about potentially using some of that data to inform um, if the data is helpful, any recommendations on um, changes to the, what was it? Um, changes that we want to bring to the council trying to find where that is um we can give us reviewing the tree list um am i remembering that correctly yeah the the that, um the tree uh recommendations for say minimum size of uh exceptional trees and things like that are uh, going to come out of the tree inventory, which is different from this uh, intern um, but looking review. At the intern data for how many people are actually applying for permits for things of different sizes. Uh, yeah, that was the sort of thing. And I think it was more informational to try to see if we can track uh, that rather than just having these records you know, it used to be that we were they would be compiled on a monthly basis and presented to the tree board in a very efficient way. And that hasn't happened for a couple of years now. And so it's, you know, it's another source of data that could be useful to tr try to understand the dynamics of tree removal and replacement in the city, but it needs to be uh, compiled and looked at and so we had a student compile it but then nothing ever i think came of it after that maybe if you're proposing it you will look at it and make a presentation to the tree board sometime yes that's sort of what i had in mind that i would uh see if i can find that intern's report and bring it to the board and see if there's something that we either want to do with it or whether we think it's something that should be done on a regular basis or whether we should just 
forget about it. I think a good part of that report or that intern's work was to try to, in looking at tree removal permits, is, you know, to gauge some sense of trends within the removal of trees, especially, I think, in terms of, you know, impact on the overall urban forest yeah. canopy. And I think the uh, the tree inventory that we've had now is, is another good and maybe a better source of data on that question, to, to the degree that was the main question that, was, that we were looking at. But, but I still think it's good for you to take your eyes onto it, Richard, if you can. Okay. So let's keep it there. And uh, anybody see anything else that needs editing or adjusting? I'm, I'm not oh. sure I have the latest version, but two uh rose up from that starts with deliver annual report to the council includes yes. analysis if we could change hannah to staff yeah that's been changed I, any place okay. there was a uh, any old uh, former um staff name i removed it and put in urban forest planner if it was for uh, the arborist and staff otherwise Elizabeth in some places. I noticed that I don't have a date for that deliver annual report to council. That's usually done in February, although it's going to be March this year. Um, so Elizabeth, if you would make note to put February, I think, in there, that would be good. Okay. Um, do you want to in that in deliver annual report to council? We have DIG 2023. That should be DIG 2024, shouldn't it? Yeah, actually, that was for the 2023 report is what I, that was in reference to. But the the um, You're gonna yeah, do it. that's the but, report is 2023. Yeah, but the I mean, next, for the date to do it is 2024. So maybe it is. I think I put 2023 in there just so that it would be clear that it was for the 2023 annual report. So maybe we put deliver 2023 annual report to the council and then say the dick will do it in 2024. Okay. So then next year, we take the same thing and revise it. It will presumably turn into Doug 2025. Yes. But, um, I would like to add myself to review LFP web content. And also down here to stay in communication with peer advocacy groups. You said you were interested, Dick, in uh, which ones of these we might mm -hmm. think of as uh, parallel, especially important. Oh. Yeah, so that would be the next thing is which ones do we want to choose as priorities for the tree board this year? Um, and which ones are more aspirational, if you will, or things that may or may not rise to uh, 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 work, you know, uh, something that we can actually work on. So the, you know, things like the, uh, the tree planting plans are sort of going to be on hold until the transit uh, project gets further along, for example. Um, but we could just start and go down through the through this and see which ones anybody thinks we should have as a priority. I mean, some things like the, the Green Fair and the Arbor Day are going to have to be priorities because we have dates set and we're going to you know, make those happen. I have a question that I just want to ask before I forget about it. It's not actually directly related to that. There are some other changes in the tree code I think we might want to consider. There is some stuff, and we've got the uh, the LFP tree canopy study. There are some changes in the wording about the canopy study that I think we ought to make. And I think, and I think we have talked about other possible changes in the code. Um, Council Member Goldman, should we do that as a separate thing or try to throw that in with the exceptional tree diameter thing? Um, I, I think, if you could lump it together, I think also like the definition of what a grove is and the account, um, if those are relatively small changes, I would say include them in the tree diameter work. We should have a meeting at some point. We should all 
look through the tree code, uh, at, least, at least section, wherever it is, the, the tree part of it, and see if we say anything we don't understand or don't like or like to change and have a meeting at some point to discuss that or have that as uh, agenda item at some point. And as I say, this the section in the uh, code about the canopy study, I don't I don't understand, and I think I understand the canopy study about as well as anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, that, so I don't speak terribly well. Okay, so. So we can always have agenda items to take up things like that, whether they're on the work plan or not. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was just sort of thinking, do you want to try to do all that at once or do it? Do it. I think I think it was going to be small stuff. We were, I'm fine with, with trying to get it all at the same time. Yeah. That means maybe maybe putting off the uh, uh, tree size thing a month or two, but just yeah. not a lot of urgency on that, I guess. I, know. Go ahead. I was going to ask a quick question about the update and public size tree box. Uh, definitely think that should be a priority, but quick question. I think Mark Hoffman, you suggested we meet with other, the climate action or the climate advocacy groups. You're going to make an intro for some of us for that person or invite those. I don't really remember exactly what we discussed, but I'm hoping to jog everyone's memory here. <laughs> Climate okay. advocacy with the Democratic Trust Board, it was it was definitely climate advocacy. Um, I know we talked about planning commission, comprehensive plan. What are the existing tree policies in our comprehensive plan, and what could they be? Yeah, I yeah. think that. Go ahead, Dick. Well, you know, rather than jumping around, what I would suggest we do is walk down through the the work plan. And there's the three sections. The first one is public outreach and education. Let's choose a few of these that we want to have as priorities and then go on to the next section and take it like that. Is that, unless you're still at the stage where you want to make changes to the plan itself? No, I was just trying to circle back to get that introduction done. Uh -huh. <laughs> More of like a crossing the, I think it was the other mark. You were going to make a connection, connect with, the Climate Action Committee. Was that correct? It was. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that that came up in the last that you would. It may well have. Uh, so aren't you married to the chair of the Climate Action Committee? Yeah, I, I believe that's why you were volunteered to do it. <laughs> what, what was I going to find out? <laughs> Just what they're working on and if there's anywhere that are working oh, intersects. Maybe we should add, add Mark to that. that <laughs> yeah. too. I'm guessing you had Mark written next to yeah. it. Just pick the wrong side. Yeah. Exactly. I, <laughs> yeah. So I haven't paid any much attention to that. I know that they're working with the uh, on, on on their piece of the uh, in getting input into the to the comprehensive plan uh, pretty seriously right now. But I'm also meeting with one of their members next week, just a friend to to chat about what we're doing and what they're doing and catch up. So I'm happy to chat up with her as well. Perfect. Well, good. Yeah. So we can follow up on it. Well, yeah. We'll make a note of that. But I, I, I think the important thing is for us to, to look at that comp plan from a tree board perspective, which is certainly going to overlap with climate considerations yeah. and uh, see where we think there might be some amendments or updates. And there's urgency to that, isn't there? Yeah, I think there is now. Yeah, I think the timeline is uh, coming on. We have that. What do we have that for? Uh, April or June? And it may need to be sooner than that. A more April-ish. <laughs> that seems like it's something. Day when they are. <laughs> yeah, we had a special planning commission meeting on Monday night. We started to talk about climate and integrating the climate action plan. Then last night, what is today, Wednesday? Last night, we were at climate action committee doing the same thing, um, talking about integrating the climate action plan into the periodic update. There will be overlap amongst all three. So some tree policy will be in the climate action plan. Some is already in the comprehensive plan. Some needs to be um, taken from the new report from DCG and put in the comp plan. So the end result by June is to have all of those bases covered in the draft. And so we started that at Planning Commission Monday night, specific with um, circulating the tree report and the DCG presentation and that short summary. Last night, same thing, shared the report. 
Um, and so if there's a moment tonight, we, uh, we can kind of round it out, but it's kind of already underway. And I imagine for the April tree board meeting, I'll have a memo that at least analyzes the existing tree policies as I see them in the comprehensive plan. So April Mayish for uh, the tree board to circle all wagons, whether it's in the climate action plan or the existing comp plan, or it's just missing entirely. That way we could put it in the draft. So you're planning to prepare a summary of sorts for us, Mark, that would uh, spark our, uh, our specify some of our thinking about trees? Exactly. To the, to the yeah. um, I've, I've read the entire comp plan once, which is hard to um, remember anything, to be honest. Sure. Then I'm reading individual elements again as they apply to what the Planning Commission is doing in individual meetings. Now I'm going to read it a third time with a uh, lens of tree board. And uh, of the eight or nine elements that are already in there, some of those will have tree policy, and I can cut and paste into a memo what they are without so, uh, putting that whole burden on the tree board. So we could come, so we maybe will have that memo the week prior to our next meeting. So we could come to that next, the, our, our March meeting, our April meeting, maybe... Uh, uh, having looked at the comp plan ourselves and having that memo in hand and at least have an initial discussion what we might then finalize in May. Or, when, when is the April meeting? Oh, it must be early. Uh, April 3rd. Yeah. April 3rd. April 3rd. I could have it to you the week before. So that sounds like a, like we want to have that on our agenda. Or that, and we could, uh, yeah, trees in the comp plan given that memo and given uh, our own our own personal reviews of the comp plan. So this these would be trees. So at that point we'll have uh, some kind of a document that gives us an idea of where the comp plan is going to be going. I guess Actually, it's, they, it's the old comp plan and then the new one. Um, the new yeah. the new one is being drafted right now, but it's based right. on the old one. The vision it hasn't changed. The existing policies in there are substantial. And so we're augmenting or revising them to meet new state legislation, the Vision 2050, King County planning policies, and anything local. So through a tree lens, the the memo that I would like to produce and bring to you on April 3rd is what is in the comprehensive plan right now that not randomly talks about trees, but focus is focused on trees, tree preservation, canopy retention repairing critical areas. There's a lot in there. By doing that, that would give you all of April to, if you want, go to those sections, read that policy, and, uh, think about it. And then if you came back in May and said, hey, there's here's 17 policies that are completely missing, or here's seven from the Climate Action Plan, here's two from the um, DCG report, then in May, I, I just simply give those to SCJ Alliance, and we inserted them into the proper element. Helps me. I think it's helpful to go ahead and say it. I'd like to respectfully just point out it's 740 already, and I, I share some of the blame for that. But um, you might want to do what Dick said and just at this point go around the, the room and flag one or two items each that you in the work plan as priority items. And that this discussion might be better under item 11, planning the agenda for next month's meeting. But at least, you know, flag your priority work plan items, approve the work plan, because there are six more agenda items after the work plan. Thank you, Larry. Yeah. <laughs> it would be enough if we didn't go through point by point, if we just each one of us offer a, a one or two that we think are important. Uh, it could be that way. Or I think, though, this should be a uh, uh, group uh, agreement on what we think are priorities. I mean, for let me take an example by going through this first public outreach. Um, we've got the web content and the the first two, the developing the public outreach. Um, you know, the web content has been an, something that has been a slow burn for years on our work plan. And while I think it would be great to make it through this year, that is to get it, you know, those uh, edits this year, I don't know that that's necessarily as high a priority, for example, as the next item, which is developing content that we can use for 
activities and support. So uh, if we're not going to call them all hot priorities, I would say of those two, for example, I think the second one is a higher priority than the first one. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'm actually, I'm actually pretty interested in getting the web content done. Some of these impossible to find things. But yeah. Well, so that you know, we we can work on any of these. Right. It doesn't mean that we're saying we have to do the priority ones before we can do anything else. And if individual board members have something that they want to, you know, take up, that would be, that's great. The Arbor Day, I think we've got to prioritize because that's a requirement of something we have to do. Yeah. The uh, the communication with other groups is one of those things that I think is something we should all keep in mind, but I don't think it's necessarily a priority for the work plan for the coming year, right? It's wherever we can find uh, ways to interact and support you know, mutually with other groups, we can do that. So I think maybe the simplest simple thing to do actually is to go down one by one and if yeah. you think it would be a high priority item, raise your hand and okay. do it that way. Yep. So number one, review web content. Actually, I think it's a priority item. Yeah, so we'll, two votes well, for that. Okay. Um, develop content to improve public outreach. Everybody, yep. Right. Host Arbor Day activity. That's sort of a requirement. We better do it. Yes. <laughs> Stay in communication. It's important, but it's going to happen. I think as a yeah. ad hoc basis. Kind of... It's not really a priority for action. I don't. I don't yeah. see it that way. Update and publicize tree walks. You can raise your hand if you want to, David. No, I'm not going to call this a priority. It's something I want to do, but yeah, it, it's yeah, not it's something a, I think is a priority for the tree board. Staff a table at the Green Fair. I think we got to do that. Yeah, we're already committed to this, so we should make it a priority, right? I think it is an opportunity to find new members. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No. Resurrect the Heritage Tree Program. Okay. No. And general invasive plant management. Is there a public option? Is there oh another correction? Is there any public option? Is there any public education opportunity here? So not and but any. Yeah. Um, well, you know, that's an important topic. Yeah. And it's part of the Arbor Day. I feel like we've combined it to the Arbor Day, Day event. Because Arbor Day in the past has been plant a tree, but this year. We sort of are taking the invasive plant management tactic. Yeah, so much more on invasive plants that can yeah. be done besides hydrogenable. Agreed. Yeah. So, uh, but I, yeah, I don't. I guess I'd put it in second tier myself, but I, I certainly think it's something. Well, it's it's a it's a really good thing to have in the fall off the big um, as part of number two, develop content to improve public outreach. Yeah, um, I mean yeah. it's that's uh, but as a separate item, it's not. So the, but the basically that was pretty straightforward. Our high priorities are uh, develop content, post annual Arbor Day activity, and staff at table. That's extremely fair. Yep. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, and transit plan moves forward. Work with the volunteer coordinator. Volunteer coordinator. Oh, okay. That one's kind of on pause. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, but it's yeah. okay. So I I wouldn't involve with this or what's well, we've already <laughs> provided some input for the city council's planning right. around that. And then now it's sort of it's gonna be uh wait and see what happens with the transit project. The, the sound transit has nothing imminent. Right. So I don't think this is a priority. It is a whenever the city calls upon us to help, we will. That's right. It will suddenly become a priority at some point. Probably not this year. Well, even so, I mean, that tree planting has always been kind of a a part of what the tree board has done. I mean, always in the yep. short history of the tree board. But uh, so the category of tree planting, you know, regardless of whether it's with the transit, some transit or not, is is still something that we should be thinking about and thinking about tree planting opportunities, I think. Yeah, I guess it seems like 
with some tracks that could possibly planting 400 trees. Um, I was planting two, um, sort of gets washed into the end of the, the, the rounding area. Well, it, it, yeah. but it's, I mean, it's a different kind of thing. It's, I mean, we only planted one tree at Arbor Day last year, but you know, it was yeah. a fairly, fairly good event. Uh, I historic. It's, I'm not sure it's high priority. I guess. Okay. Yeah. Historically, yeah. the tree board has done more with group plantings and, uh, you know, up by the reservoir on Horizon View, um, in street trees down in uh, the Sheridan Beach, Sheridan Heights neighborhood. Um, Things like that. It's that was back when we had sort of a a budget that we could spend on trees, and that has been difficult to get the city to uh, commit to us what sort of funds we have available to work with, and that's tied up now so much with the transit that it's those sorts of things have been put on hold. Maybe the thing to do is to wait. Until we see what Sound Transit does, and then see what holes have been left after that. I mean, we we have talked in the past about street tree plantings in various places, and yeah. we even mapped out every one of them. And something like that mapping became part of the Sound Transit process. Yeah. Um, and but I think if the keeping it in the work plan, and then when Sound Transit has done their thing, saying okay, you know, now what? Right. What, what can we do to, to 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 make things even better? All right, so the next one. Make recommendations to council on the findings and review of the tree canopy study every five years. To me, that's a fairly high priority. Yeah, and it's pretty much like uh, another one that the council did like. It's like, uh, well, it's so like the term data, it's like. Uh, well, it, is, it is a little different. We have another tree canopy study this time. It's yeah. a problem. I mean, it's it's it, maybe the wording on this isn't as good as it could be because the main priority right now is to push the city council to do the to pay for the tree study, the canopy study. Uh, I think that should be a priority. I think it's one of those things that's perhaps overdue for our next canopy study, or it will be if we don't start pushing on it now. Yeah. And uh, I think both this and the next one probably deserve priority. The next one is one of the things we have been planning to do once we got the tree inventory and making recommendations about exceptional trees. So I think both of these probably deserve to be priorities. Anybody? Agreed. Agreed, yeah. I want to reword this one a little bit because uh, it sounds like if we're making recommendations to the council on the findings, can't really do that until we have it no. done. Right, that's a good idea. What would you suggest? Uh, make recommendations on pursuing the next LFP the tree, tree canopy, canopy study? Tree canopy study this year, yeah. Or just, okay. yeah. It's a, the, the, the city, the municipal code says we post it every five years, yeah. and it's been six now. Um, so it's, we have the support of law behind us, but uh, yeah, just clarifying the language. So, Elizabeth, can you make that edit? Uh, yeah. Make recommendations to council to pursue the next LFP tree canopy study or uh, five year tree canopy study or something I, like oh, that? Uh, yeah, five year tree canopy study. Yeah, sounds good. That's about how often they fly new. The tree canopy study is based on LIDAR flights mm -hmm. and they fly about every five years. So, in terms of other priorities, my recommendation would be to jump and um, just highlight the very last one. The rest are things yeah. that are either less important or just going to happen because it's a single conversation. And then the last one is the only one that's a once in a five year opportunity that. Yes, that's definitely. Sure. So yeah. that's my recommendation on that so we don't make everything a priority. <laughs> do that one and call it. Good. Yeah, okay. okay. Good. Do we right. have a motion to approve the work plan with these edits and priorities? Be nice not to have to look at this again. We'll go through <laughs> these point by point. Wouldn't it? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I would move that we that we accept the work plan with the uh, the modifications that we've made tonight. For a second. I'll second. All in favor. All right. Bye. Okay. Thank you all. <laughs>
All right, the BTG watershed report for additional questions. Um, basically, I think you guys talked about it last month and decided it was in good shape. As far as I'm concerned, it's in pretty good shape. I mean, there, there's some things I might change if I was writing it, but uh, in terms of telling them what to do differently, it looks like which they had been a little more sensitive with significant figures instead of saying there's 299,737 trees here and they mean somewhere around 300,000. But that's that's a, a thing that's worried me for 50 years of people's reports. I'm not going to repeat it. I'm perfectly happy with it. We have, there's a, I still have a problem with some of the calculations that when I calculate the data, I don't call the same thing they come up with. And they are supposed to work on that. I mean, I've sent them my, my problems. They're getting paid to work on that for, I guess, up to five or 10 hours. Um, 15. Yeah. So for tonight, uh, for the tree board, if you could confirm there's no further questions, we have the remaining question from Doug. Sam will be, of DCG will be back next week right. and analyze that, respond to that in March. Tonight, if the board confirms there's no further questions, then we can reserve as much of the 15 hours under this added contract for them to begin to respond to the council questions that uh, were raised on the 22nd of February. And I think working out my issues with them is not going to change reports. Right. It'll make it easier for me to work with their data and figure out. Yeah. And, it's, and the, as I've said before, it's a small number, uh, but it's, it's big enough to be a little bit of concern, not large enough to be a big worry. Yeah. I don't, apart from the, the, the few issues that Doug has raised, I don't think we have any other concerns from the board. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted to confirm that in a meeting so that I can close the contract when right. once they All respond. We agree. All in favor of uh, considering the tree board the report to be acceptable? Yes, sir. Thank but you. I need a second. Okay. I don't think that's an official vote. That's more just a sense of the room so that Mark knows yeah. what the staff direction is. Okay. It's a, yeah. Election of tree board chair and vice chair. Uh, I gather you all talked about that last month. Um, we did. I don't think you want to be chair, but I'm willing to be. I think it's kind of my turn. That's what we heard. <laughs> so I'd like to nominate <laughs> Doug as tree board chair for the coming year. Second. Are there any other candidates? Uh, all in favor of Doug. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Oh, and if, if there's a need for a vice chair, oh, well, we're getting that. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> Legally, there is. Yeah, no, I would like to nominate it. But now we move on to the vice chair. I'd like to nominate Mark Phillips for the vice chair position. Second. Okay. Are there any other candidates? Uh, all in favor of Mark for the vice chair? We used to put our heads down in our desks when we did this for the weekend. You still remember those days. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot to Doug and Mark for taking this on. Thank you. Well, thank you for what you've done over the last yes. two years. Yeah. All right. Changes to the tree list. This is mostly kind of just information for a KTE, I think. Um, you two weren't part of the board when we talked about this last one, or were you? We were. You were, okay. Yeah. All right. So I don't have to review it as much. Basically, there's 14 species out there. The, the issue at this point is we decided we want to create a, a, a bad trees list, a prescribed trees list that does not count for tree replacements and should not be planted on public property. It shouldn't be planted in yards anyway, but we can't, we, I don't think we can honestly tell people not to plant something in their yard if they want to. Uh, but, but it doesn't count as a replacement tree. Um, but we had this list of 14 additional species that weren't really trees of concern, but uh, for one reason or another, Tim thought they were not trees we should be encouraging people to plant. And these are all trees that are actually in our you know, plant list. Uh, one of them, for example, is one of the, which we pointed out in the tree inventory, the emerald tree, the, any kind of ash, and it's multiple species of ash, is susceptible to emerald tree borer, emerald ash borer. And that's a potential problem that is probably going to get here if it's not here already. Um, so if we want to put things like that, on the do not plant list, we wanted to put a note in the list, you can plant this, but be aware it will probably get eaten by emerald ash water eventually. Um, or just 
we could just take it off the take it off the recommended list, but not put it in the in the prescribed list. That means anybody who wants to plan it has to find a justification for that species instead of something on the prescribed list. I just wonder, um, since we have an urban forestry planner that's coming on board in a couple of weeks, do you want to, and totally your decision, uh, but would you rather discuss it now or table it until April when the urban forestry planner will be at the meeting and will presumably have some feelings and opinions on this? I think that's a good, I good consideration. And I think that raising this stuff is just going to keep us kind of in tune with the the process that we're kind of going through here on a long-term basis of thinking about this. But okay, and to be, I, I'm not trying to shut down the conversation. No, I don't. want to keep that perspective in mind. They're probably good. Yeah, I was actually, my, my thought had been, I don't think it was necessarily a good thought, but to get some sense of the tree board, then I would go meet with the urban planner and say, this is, you know, this is where we are in this thing. You know these species better than we do. What do you think? But maybe discussing it, I mean, next, next meeting is not going to be very good for that. We're going to work in a comprehensive plan, but... Uh, I do like the idea, number two down below there, of at least making note of these uh, these uh, issues related to those 14 types of trees and making that those notes into the into the tree list itself somewhere in the process of replacement trees. So that people would be would know about them. Would we be able to add at least the invasive ones to the band list? I mean, can we split what we do with these? Like I, I, I just think it makes sense to ban the invasive trees and then the other ones that would be an economic loss to someone who plants it on their property, then that's fair to leave it on the list and say, this is probably what's going to happen. Be aware you're going to lose money because the ash borer is coming along. Yeah, we don't make that pretty dull thing. Yeah, perfect. I was going to recommend to say, but minimum take the invasives off the list. Well, the, invasive, well, the officially recognized invasive will be off the list as soon as we get around to actually changing it. I guess I don't want to change it and then change it and then change it again. So yeah. to make the change, I want to do it. But we've already agreed to certainly get the class C noxious weeds out of our recommended list. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, clarification. So of the 14 species that are listed, are any of those the King County no. needs of concern? So that's a separate. So that there's these. So there's that, which I think the tree board has already voiced their opinion right. on. And then in addition, there's these 14. So right. none of the 14 are of the King County weeds. No, the, yeah. These are ones in whole regard as the basin. And if you Google them, you probably normally find some confirmation of that, but they aren't they aren't officially bad trees. I, I would I would dispute a couple of them on this list. I don't know what Tim's source was, but you know, for example, Prunus Virginiana is uh uh native here, um, probably native initially in the Puget Sound lowland, same with uh, uh, trembling aspen, you know, that, whether they should be, are suited for street trees or not is another issue, but. So that's all I would say. Larry's suggestion that it seems like a good, a reminder to think about it and have proposals and then. Yeah, and maybe, maybe I can do it. Further forest plan or call or something like that. Sometimes, once you've got her feet on the ground for a week or so, give her a call and say, Hey, we've had this issue. We'd like to discuss it at the next meeting. I think that's good. Deborah. You know, it, it, it wouldn't be too much to ask, Doug. I would appreciate it if you could put the uh, common names oh. in that <laughs> list. Well, here, because I, you know, I sat at my computer and looked many of these up carefully and I don't, couldn't find my notes before this meeting. And I know there's some that said, Oh, I know that tree. <laughs> but I don't know it from this list. <laughs> okay. well, six, I see it's a chance it's six spruce. You know that probably. Yeah. Oh, sure. but yeah. Right. And wow. we planted a bunch of them in that McAleer Creek project. So it's yeah. a, you know, a, yeah. a location. Yeah. Yeah. It's a location thing, but it's going to get less and less well adapted to here as time and change gets worse and worse. So it's it's not one I would plant. All of them. Well, anyway, maybe we, I think we have already agreed that we should. It, uh, decided to take this up more seriously with the our, our, our what do we call that person our urban forest planner urban forest planner and uh and in the meantime it would be helpful at least to need to have oh yeah I, I, common names associated with each of those i realized i have one of these in my backyard the and it does suffer it keeps popping up all over the place 
So these people, I mean, that's maybe not a reason for not planning it in your yard, but realize when you plant in your yard that it's going to do that. Maybe, and maybe that's the way to do it. Say, so, yeah, that's okay. It's like got very pretty little blackberries with purple, purple uh, things around them. Uh, like they sucker. Yeah. Yeah. Not the, suitable for a street right? tree, but somebody might, if they have space for it, it's a lovely thing. Yeah, and, and if it's not in a place where it's not going to run into anything. And the same thing with aspen, actually. Um, yeah. I think anything that suckers like aspen does is probably not a good street tree. But uh, so, so let's, let's talk about it next month. And again, remembering we're not treating them all the same necessarily. The emerald ash borer, I think, probably not a good idea to plant in the yard. And uh, some of these other things that have no, I don't know, Prune of Anything Anything's got blossom rot. The, the trees outside my house have blossom rot. It's a royal pain or something very simple. No, brown tree rot. Anyway. Uh, so, okay, we'll move that on to next month. Okay, Arbor Day. And I would actually recommend moving it to two months out because next yeah. month the urban forest planner will have been here for like two weeks. Okay. <laughs> so, right. let them get their feet after them a little more <laughs> he's highly skilled and so the opportunity may be to to give her the background she'll know all the species <laughs> but what she doesn't know is the effort that you're doing and so if you could summarize that in your first meeting in april that should be enough or i could i could just send her an email too you know, this is this is what we've done she'd probably read it back to me if we can talk about it meeting. and i could just email here to, to talk, I didn't remember that uh, our two new members had been here for the last discussion. I tried to sort of summarize the situation from the beginning. Uh, so just a little bit of edit of that. A couple of things. I have incorporated no edits to this. So there was no out of forum meeting that happened over email. <laughs> <laughs> um, but very quickly, I feel like I should say that I had generative AI involved in creating oh, yeah. this press release. I asked one of the chat bots to create a press release for me because I had no idea how uh, a press release should look. And this is what popped out. I thought it looked great. But one of the things that offered up was um, supplementing our schedule of events. So I think we should address that issue. Do we want to add on an actual work party where we hand out gloves and clippers and have people join in and actually remove some of the ivy that's at that spot. We can do that. We don't have to do it. And if we decide not to, I'll just delete that from the schedule of events. Oh, no. I I, I would appreciate it that you put your finger on that. Because I was curious how we were going to stand around talking about either removal for two hours. Uh, but it, So it's helpful to me to think that we would have a, 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 some information and a demonstration and then actually have asked people to do some work. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They were interested. But we yeah. would need gloves and clippers. So we'd have to, I don't know if we are allowed to bring those ourselves as part of the tree board. We are. Or, what do you think about that for anyone? I are we still meeting? I think that we should say in this press release, bring work gloves. Perfect. Bring work gloves and even clippers. Got it. Okay. And if we have some small Perfect. cash of those, either through public works or through the stewardship foundation, some extra gloves that we can have on hand. But I think we should give the expectation bring bring yeah. gloves. Yeah. That we have that stewardship foundation may have some maybe. Is that, there that, any that. world where we can provide any kind of a refreshment? Yeah, we can figure it out. Really? No. Yeah. I'm, I'll buy. I'll buy. <laughs> That's great. I'll like bring I'll bring coffee side. and cups and. Yeah. Uh, Perfect. Maybe a bottle of juice in case it's continued. perfect. I'll just say, and refreshments will be provided. Yes, we can say that. Yeah. Amber ale, maybe, or early for that. <laughs> <laughs> we probably have to get a I go with probably have to get a permit. Permit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, coffee for all. I have one under the pot. On I mean, I, I don't know. Do we, we need to have yeah. people all, I've seen this? I, mm -hmm. we, oh, there we go. It was sent out earlier for us to take a look at. Yeah, it not was to decide it, about, but to bring to the meeting to decide about. It. Exactly. One I, question: Who was going to ask the mayor for the attribute? <laughs> Who's in contact with the mayor more often than I am? <laughs> oh, 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 good. Yeah. So, so AI generated mayor French's comment. Oh, that's oh. <laughs> um, Would you like me to reach out to Tom? That would be great. 
Yeah. Well, actually, maybe it's okay that we uh, quote We him attribute there. that quote to him. It would be great. He has an alternative quote he would like attribute. Yeah, we can yeah. put in there anything yeah. he'd like to say, but just tell him that Gemini, which is Google's chat, uh, or Google's AI, thought that he might want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I had one thought. Please. Um, what's wrong with Ivy? Instead of, and I, this, it's all right with Sarah. I mean, I don't want to question AI, but <laughs> what, while, while some may appreciate its beauty, I was suggesting, I would suggest maybe replacing with orig originally brought to this area as an attractive ground cover. Perfect. Um, yep. English ivy can be highly destructive. And some people do, certainly do think it's attractive and Frankly, in some locations, I do too. The ivy of the are alive. I bought my house because I was so impressed with all the ivy that was all over the property. <laughs> and then you bought the ivy out competition. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so, so it might be possible to put it in there. Dick, Dick had made a comment a couple of times that ivy only flowers and produces seeds when it's on trees or when it spreads up, climbs up something. And I don't know. Is it worth? I don't have a particular enough. reason for taking it off trees. Is, is because of that. Okay. I mean, it, it spreads otherwise, but being moved to places where it isn't already happens only when it's when it's flowering, right? Dave? Right. So it produces fruit when it grows up on something, whether it's a fence or another tree or something, yeah. and then birds disperse it, and that's ultimately the most damaging uh, part of its uh, invasiveness, and that's the reason why it's so critical to get it off trees, even if you can't get it off all the ground cover underneath. So I don't know if there's a way to make a note of that, but it's kind of, I think we're kind of pushing the edge of uh, how much information you want in a press release anyway. That's yes. exactly I think that's information that certainly would be conveyed. At the demo. And we yeah. were talking about having a, an essay to go in, say the, the Lake Forest Park e-news or something that could include a little more information like that, perhaps. You, yeah. You mentioned writing that, Dick. Did I? I thought you were going to write it and I was going to edit or something. Oh, you wanted me to write it? Oh, <laughs> I, let's work together on it. We, we can make okay. that happen. <laughs> How does a press release work, Alyssa? Once we confirm. Uh, I think it'll probably be sent out on the monthly newspaper that the city sends out, right, Mark? This event is the end of April, right? Yes. So, um, Deputy City Clerk and various other staff can help us with social media. All we need to do is get them the copy. And so if we wanted, well, that's okay. So and if we wanted to use this uh, with like the shoreline area news, is, it, is, is uh, are we ready to go with that? Or is there any other internal city process that needs to happen before we go to a publication like that? There is, and so through that city clerk kind of connection, they make sure that whatever copy or text or wording is consistent with the city's vision. It's so, just a it's just a safety check. Yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. So if Larry can come back to us and confirm that Mayor French is okay with the quote, I will send these edits to you to make Elizabeth in the document based on our discussion here. And um, I will get started on that day, circulate just to you today. And then when do I have to have, when should we have that essay finished to get into the LSP news? Someone should contact Joanne. Yeah, so the e-news is switching to um, quarterly, I believe, or every other month, uh -huh. instead of one month. Not They announced it uh, yesterday. Not sure when it's going out, but there are other opportunities. There's the notify me now, a couple other web things, web presence, and the e blast notification. So we have, we'll investigate. Oh, and then the weird things like Facebook, X, etc., which I don't use. But oh, we still we used to call them news flashes. Do we still call them news flashes or whatever? What uh, yeah. If you're familiar with that, I'm just too new to know what they're yeah. called, but they're still available. Well, they can go out pretty much any time. Correct. Yeah. The FA can go out pretty much. Um, I think that would be a more limited press release. I, I, 
I don't know what your sense. Well, the splashes are usually a little shorter. But when when the material or copy is ready, just talk with Joanne, and then she she knows all of the background on on the different methods. And then if she needs to then contact another staff member for any one of them, she can. So as long as she knows what's needed, she'll she'll help. We're talking about two different things here: the essay and the press release. Right? Press release, yeah. we we just confirm and get all the details that and send to you, Elizabeth. And then you'll handle that. And then the essay, you want me to work with Joanne once we finalize. Yeah. Just show her what you have, and then she'll suggest whatever method is available. Perfect. Is there really a need for an essay? I wonder. Uh, I mean, if it's not, I may contradict myself, but if it's, if it's, I, I, I think we don't need much more than what's here. Uh, you mentioned the propagation process, the seeding process. Uh, if that's really a salient point, then maybe we ought to put it in here so we have kind of one document that I mean it would be used for all those all of those media that we mentioned, city media and uh shoreline area news and uh this is this is too long for the e news. E news is usually for this length maybe. The you mean the 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 the, the, the newsletter? Well the e newsletter and the, the paper newsletter. I have a proposal that we put this out for now to tell people about the event and then we follow up afterwards with something in the e-news that's a short paragraph or however long it needs to be with a link to whatever video we end up with. Oh, that's oh, a great idea. Yeah. A recap of oh, like, okay. yeah, what we did. So that comes out in a few months. A little of, bit like, more detail. That's why, why we need to get rid of it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. You're thinking, Victoria, you put something like this out fairly soon. Put this out now to get people to the event. Yeah. Okay. Where would you put it out? How would you put it out? How would the press release? Through whatever channels Joanne is connected, can okay. help us connect to okay. that gets it out to Charlene Area News or other sources. I don't know the whole list, but it sounds like Joanne is the source to get information into the community and can tell us all the yeah. various ways to do that. Yeah. So, so for some information, uh, the news flash system, um, some of the more, like the most recent ones are the planning commission having special meetings about the comp plan, uh, asking for volunteers for the tree board and climate committee, the workshop for the lakefront park, uh, NEMCO certification classes, things like that. So I think this would fit into the news flash. Agreed. Yeah. Um, I would encourage you to look at those, get a feel for how long they tend to be. It looks like maybe three yeah. paragraphs. Yeah. Um, I, I think you could probably take out the about Lake Forest Park and yeah. about Arbor Day. Yeah. But I, I think it's anyone who's reading this knows what the what the forest park is. Okay. So I, I think it depends on who we're sending this to, because the purpose of a press release is to give anyone who might want to talk about this all the information they need, and then they take the salient information and create their story or whatever it is. Um. So it depends on if we're writing copy to go directly into something, if that's the request, or if the request is a press release that gives them all the info to create the content for whatever they're generating. For example, the news flash about the planning commission's comp plan doesn't actually, you know, doesn't have an about the planning commission section. It's really just, okay, here's the comp, what is the comprehensive plan? When are yeah. the meetings? How can you- so, well, The question is who writes that? Do we write that and submit it as final copy or do we give Joanne all of, or whoever, all of this information and they take it and put the salient information into a news flash format? Yeah, this is like the master document. And then basically we I agree with you. I know what you're saying. Yeah. This is the master document. This is there we can use this to fulfill the purposes for any sort of news possibility out there. And the news flash is one that I think they'll take this document, look at it, they'll say we can't fit everything, and they'll just put like maybe the three paragraphs. But that wouldn't but be I think you guys could do that, not just Joanne. You, could, you know more about it. We can do it. Yeah. Do, I, think. Mm -hmm. I can advise her. I can just say take out those last two paragraphs. Yeah. yeah. It sounds good. like what needs to happen is you need to email Joanne with this and say, here's yeah. the press release. Tell me what options there are and yeah. what, how you need to me to deliver you copy for them. Because <laughs> some folks want exact copy delivered to them, and some folks are like, give me the overview. I will write the copy so that it fits our like, stance yeah. and narrative. It totally depends on how how they like to manage their own yeah perfect really 
public relations. So another thing that would go along with this is a poster of some kind. And yes. You already had a poster. Yes. This, this is not a poster. This is a, so. Yeah. So I have just, it's designed as an eight and a half by 11 flyer that can be posted on the bulletin board in the town center. Um, I know Starbucks used to have community bulletin boards. I don't know if they do anymore. Um, if other folks know of other community spaces locally that you want to, yeah, yeah that's the community board okay. on the comments. Um, yeah, that, yeah, that would be like a trim down version of this. Yeah, it literally says like join the tree board for ivory removal yeah. and has like a short date, time, um, and that's about it. Does this have the location on it? Yeah. Yes, it does. Yeah. Okay. Um, I will add in bring your own gloves and the work party details into it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then can send out the final copy. It's pretty straightforward. Um, okay. can send out the final copy for y'all to feel free to post anywhere you know of. Sure. Perfect though. If you're yeah. in the community and see a community bulletin board. It sounds like our essay deck will be postponed until we do a wrap up of the event. Okay. You're you're here to do. I think that's fine. Okay, perfect. But I'll I'll work on it. Mark or Elizabeth may know. Does anyone from the city need to approve if we're doing like a flyer to post up for the event in the commons? Does that need to be approved by anyone? Not approved. Just awareness. Uh, the okay. anything you do on behalf of the city is kind of a broader general branding and message and you know uh, respectful and so forth. There, but yeah. doesn't extend to detail like format your wording and you know or what the content is but just awareness do i just need to submit that to you elizabeth or is there someone else i need to submit that to um i think you can submit it to me and i know where you post it out in the comments yeah so i can go post it i'm happy to do it as well i'm there okay. all the time <laughs> yeah okay. Okay. <laughs> but um i think yeah so just sending it to us so we are aware and then I could either tell you it's okay for you to post, or if you want me to post it, I can post it. Perfect. Yeah. Like I said, if folks know of other locations, if we can all have a copy of it, that if you run across somewhere you want to post it, yeah. stick it up. I might put one next to the mailboxes on my block, places like that. Oh, that's okay. okay. I live right around the corner from where we're going to be, so. Just don't um, staple them to uh, street <laughs> lights or power yeah. poles. <laughs> Road signs, things like that. Paste, paste them up, right? Not staple. Oh. <laughs> uh, 35th Avenue Northeast. I think the Northeast needs to be in there, even though it is. There's only one 35th in there. Oh, oh there. And, and the poster it is. Oh, the poster. Okay. I'm here. Sorry. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. So the poster, the poster is just one page saying that the demonstration is going wrong. If you yes. Talk, right? <laughs> Which I could. You know, we could got, yeah. But that's as I said. I follow that or three fifth after northeast. No? Yeah. Oh, I like that. Right. You better just judge it, Larry. Um, so here's a fun fact. It, this doesn't change anything. Washington State's Arbor Day is a different date than National Arbor Day. Uh, Washington State's Arbor Day is Wednesday, April 10th. National Arbor Day is the 26th. So, but I don't think this should change what's plain being planned. Just a, as a heads up that. Washington no. is leaving oh. our own way. So maybe we should say National Arbor Day. I will do that. Yeah, I will put that on. <laughs> it's very <laughs> disappointing that nobody jumped at the idea of a fuzzy uh, mountain beaver. <laughs> I haven't generated those. I'll ask the bot to generate some really cute mountain beaver. Yeah, like that yeah, I like I like the old guy. Whatever I don't know what it was, a help a little tree in his hand. Yeah, I have no idea. Mountain beaver, mountain beaver, would have the tree sticking out from both sides of his teeth. <laughs> uh, yeah. In terms of us being a tree city USA, their requirement is that we have to have a proclamation and we have to have some sort of Arbor Day celebration. But there's no rule that says when it needs to be. So yeah, yeah. it's Arbor Day in July. Yes, as long as the city is doing something to celebrate Arbor Day, that's Thank sufficient you. for PCD USA purposes. Excellent. Thank you for clarifying that. Uh, just another update as well. The permit for this event was approved. Uh, Jess can let me know. She just said tomorrow she's going to send out like a formal approval, but it, it's been approved. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you for taking care of that. Do you have Joanne? Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, Joanne's contact details. Yeah, I go with that. Thank you. Great. So you feel like you you seem to be taking a lot of stuff here. You guys have <laughs> clear orders of what to help. We have this clear is. orders. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks, guys. Um, related to Arbor Day, but not related to this event. Um, those of you who were on the, on the board last year remember that one of our members died last year, not probably June or July. And I believe her husband wanted to spread some of her ashes next time we planted a tree. Um, I also wanted to put a bench somewhere. We obviously can't do that as part of this. We won't give some private property. But we should keep that in mind for some future Arbor Day event so we can you know, recognize Mandy's contribution to the, the tree board. Mm -hmm. but, you know, maybe just before we drop the subject, maybe we wait until we get to our next meeting, but we probably want to think about setup and stuff uh at the at the location uh i mean things like having a table having a top where we're have some refreshments and uh yeah. roles who does what i think i think stacy you were thinking you're going to be a demonstrator right i can and, do, and do, we, do we have plan for a videographer and uh and, and i think we ought to have one person designated as parking attendant yeah and i'd be willing to do that okay <laughs> There's, there's there's pretty good parking at this location, but just to keep people getting yeah. in and out, okay. Okay. Perfect. And assuming there'll be a large number of people, which is pretty busy subject. I will prep that and circulate it in advance of our our next meeting. Okay. A role and responsibilities and sort of a schedule for the day. Run of show. Run of show. Great. But you guys want to form a a three person. Unofficial subcommittee who can interact and talk about that kind of thing and then I will tell us by next month what plans are. Perfect. You can meet officially without being official. <laughs> so we can we will put the plans before the larger body for there we go. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Okay. Green fair. So this is on the 30th of this month. Uh I, I don't know. Is this just an off the wall idea? I, I had assumed that we would want some kind of presence there. I, I was trying to think with when we had actually spoken about that before, but I, I think we had. Um, so it would have been having a table in the Commons from ten to two on that day, and uh, and just I think figuring out. That in in my mind, it's like it, I asked if we could make a poster of um, this thing that uh, I think. Victoria produced this one page document about the tree board. And that can be blown up to, you know, a tabloid size if you want. That's easy to print at a larger size, or it can, I was picturing it literally as just like on a the flyer table. on the table on the or table. get one of those little plastic stands yeah, that, that so we people have, can. Yeah, can we, we have a little plastic stand. Last year we yeah. had, which was will be here with your last year, um, <laughs> the arborist ad, we still had. Quite a lot of information about trees it's all in, in bifolds and things like that and right. stand to hold it all um hopefully the new arborist will be able to find that uh hopefully the new arborist will be able to join us because that's i think a lot of people would really like to uh meet the new arborist and i'm told that in previous years you know the arborist has been able to get find all sorts of information to people they were really happy about um frankly people have a lot more questions about, about the arborist than they do in tree board um but i don't know mark do you have any idea whether well, she, I, I know Drew, she's highly enthusiastic. I just can't speak for her. Um, but she does a lot of uh, uh, work within the industry, both for, well, I'll leave it to her. I think she's she'd be excited. That'd be about two weeks in, so she'll need to know right away. As far as pamphlets and information, we have an office um, in, back in the CD department that's full of boxes and paper. And as part of our records retention and purging, I found a box full of Arbor related pamphlets and information. So I have a feeling that's what you're talking about and yeah. would just put them in her hands. Okay. Well, okay. Well, if you could talk with her about that and we'll start uh, thinking that she's going to be a presence then that, 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 uh, event and whatever materials she thinks is appropriate. Um, you know, I, I think it's a good opportunity to, to uh, recruit members of the tree board. Yeah. Yep. And there's a nice trifold that uh, you work on. 
There is. I did want to make a quick note. I think it was possibly Dick has mentioned in the past that at previous tabling events where our arborist was there, it was not always friendly conversations, <laughs> that there were folks who wanted to had bones to pick about our tree code or um, removal policies. Throwing a brand new urban forest planner into that two weeks in might not be kind. So you may just want to have that I don't want them to feel pressured to be there and then be getting questions from the community that they are not prepared to be fielding <laughs> two weeks in. Um, and be highly confident. I'm sure they would navigate it well. Um, it's and a, it's not fun. It's a little bit. <laughs> um, so I think it would be a great place to have info about the tree board. Folks who are motivated to go to that kind of event are more likely to care about our trees and our canopy. Um, this, so even if we're just there to well, hand out brochures about trees and say, please, please join us. Feel so I'm willing to be there for all the part of it. Are there other folks who are I can be there. Be there, be there. Yeah. So, so we got at least three of us who will, who will be there. And, and, and we're all used to having uncomfortable conversations. <laughs> Am I able to join? Dream. Dream. We have Dream's coming. If it's pick with me, I don't want to throw them in and have them be yeah. thrilled about stuff they're not deeply into yet in right. their possession. Now so. she's well versed, and I'll just say she's coming to us from Bainbridge Island. <laughs> <laughs> they might have some passionate citizens as well. <laughs> Possibly, yes. <laughs> you know, Allegedly, and our our municipal code. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's right. That's the job. That's right. the thing. Yeah, yeah you're, it's a real good point. I I think this brochure that we've seen a draft of this trifold on uh, it's really about the tree board. It's titled Manage Lake Lake Forest Park Managing Our Community Forest, and it's really about the tree board. I think it would be nice if we could have this brochure. I don't know what's in the box you saw, Mark, but maybe there's something in there about the tree board specifically. But when I, I opened this, it seemed very familiar. So this two-page um, management thing might be a portion of what I saw. I just created it about a month ago, so probably. Oh, yeah, they couldn't be. <laughs> um, but there's, there's, I would say, five, six, seven different types. Most of yeah. them are trifold. Some of them are industry-related. Some appear to be specific to Lake Forest Park. So I'll, I'll give her the entire box. Um, is it too much to think that we could approve this now for use? Uh, at least uh, in whatever, get whatever... You're only showing one side. Crap, we have both sides of it. I thought it was a trifold. It looks like it. Is. Yeah. yeah, but it's big. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 trifold has six pads. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's great. And I did go through and um, after reviewing the uh, watershed report, added some of the stats from that into the um, Thank you. about our canopy. I removed one of the photos so I could add more info in there. I think I got the title wrong though. It's urban forest planner, not manager. Is that correct? Yeah, on page two. If you could change manager to planner, then that'd yep. be fine. I think it's a couple places in there. So is it okay? I would motion to approve it with those changes. Uh, okay. Well, what what could we agree that we can maybe make at least a limited number of copies of this? As yeah, if you. And if you finalize copy and get it in some form, whether I don't I don't know the language, PDF or yep. whatever the software, get it to Elizabeth. We'll go to our printer. That way the invoice is directly to us. Perfect. Great. Nice paper. Nice decent quality paper rather than just the, the Yeah. <laughs> we don't need a whole lot of copies. Let's see how it grows. We need yeah. 50 or 100 or something. Not more than 100. We've had a both. Yeah. Sorry. I would just point that if you have this and you like it, it doesn't have to just be for the green fair. So you, right. you could also use yeah. it if you're going to have a table at one of the farmers markets. That was the goal for it's all, none of it is time specific um, and none of it is tree board specific. So if there's other things that it makes sense to have it on that. It doesn't say join the tree board. Hopefully it doesn't say effort. join, it says learn more about it. Right. But it, Hopefully, join the tree, trying to get people to join the tree board is a temporary thing. And it's yes. been going on since I joined the tree board. But <laughs> um, the other thing that we should do, well, I think, we've had a motion to approve this, or do you want to, are we having a discussion on the motion like this? 
I, I think we're good. Uh, any other discussion? Or do you want to go call for a, for a vote? Um, somebody already moved up. The jury moved it. I moved it. I moved it. Please move the second. I said, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Victoria, it's all in favor of accepting, accepting this okay. and making it our official publication. All right. Victoria? Okay. Yeah, I will. I'll make so we, final work, day out, we work out schedules amongst ourselves, and I'm willing to be there at least from 10 to 12. Uh, maybe longer if we get to be here. If I'm having fun. What is it? One to three? It's, it's 10 to two, I think. Yes, it's 10 to two. So you'll be there for this. You'd shut up too then. Yeah. yeah right. And so the other thing we now want to be sure to do is uh, somebody should tomorrow call uh, or talk to Corey. I don't know. Maybe Richard, maybe you know if she if she has this us on her plan for setup. I don't know. I was wondering the same thing. So yeah. whoever uh is in charge of assigning tables or spaces, we need to get to them right away, I think. Well, I can do that tomorrow if that's okay. But I'll sure. just I kind of we need a table and maybe two chairs. Yeah. And if you think there's an I, I could bring up my own easel. And if we need that, we see it. I don't see a need for it now, but it, it, we may want to get some thought to how to dress this table up a bit. It's just yeah, it, having a banner that we could put down, you know, put in front of the table so that it hangs in front of the table would be nice. Um, anyone have a bonfire? I was gonna say I want like a couple little trees on the table. Exactly. <laughs> we have that Arbor Day banner that we used last year i don't know if that would be i don't think know if that says anything about the tree board or the i'd rather use that than make a new one i think personally yeah. it worked okay but yeah that's good yeah, yeah. sure and serve two purposes we can publicize the uh mm -hmm. idea. oh yeah like a tree. That's so true okay. so that might just go on the front of the table like duct, duct tape kind of things but yeah. sort of, well that's it. okay uh, does does anyone know where that's it? located? <laughs> where is it might know? be back in that room with the pamphlets. <laughs> oh, I'm sure Corey knows. Corey, okay. The we had it out last in April last year. Can't be too much stuff. I'll ask her about that. Look at the plastic stands to for right. sure. You guys. Oh yeah. Fabulous. Okay. Yeah, sure. So we'll have and we'll have copies of some kind of pamphlet about the uh, about the Arbor Day too. We have something we can hand to people, a postery thing. We have the eight and a half by eleven flyers. I can also make that um the other thing I often do is like quarter page for anything that you want to be able to send with people. So I can do a join the tree board quarter page as well as an Arbor Day quarter page if you want to be able to hand those out to folks. Yeah, they can take over with them for the yeah. for both. So you can have the eight and a half by eleven flyers for both that can go in plastic stands, and then a little just something for people to take if they want. Kind of like the things where people put their number on piece of paper and tear it off, but bigger. Yep. Okay. That brings us to outreach material. Which we've already discussed. We're talking a lot. Right? <laughs> so, Mark, I'll, I'll take the second half of the day and you know, at least have one of us here each time. Okay, we're counting that. We'll stay to see if we got issues on at some point. I'll Where be I... there for a couple hours. Oh, yeah, I'll be there. I'll be there whenever you want me to be there. Okay. Mark, you want to organize the timing for people who we could be there with. Okay, since you're going to be there early. Well, I'll, just, I'll, I'll send out a note saying what I thought I heard. Perfect. <laughs> And don't reply all. Was there any more we need to talk about at this point in terms of uh, outreach material? I wonder. It's, I don't have anything. All right, it's just. It's a really, really wonderful thing we've done. It's really <laughs> nice to have these things and be able yeah. to be able to make changes in them. You know, say we. I appreciate your adding stuff from the report in there. I think it's nice to see. So I have a question for the board. 
something that you discussed in the past was some like a welcome flyer. So someone has just moved to Lake Forest Park, welcome yeah. flyer explaining the tree rules. So are you still looking at that as an, as an outreach? That's what I believe the original trifold that I based this off of, that we didn't have an editable version of, was it intended to be. I think this kind of morphed into more general outreach materials. I still am interested in exploring that of if there is some way to partner with the city and say, when someone buys a property in Lake Forest Park, the city mails them one of these at some point. Um, I also think it's this part of the work plan. Yeah. Uh, I envision that more as like a postcard, more than a trifle. Um, partially because then you don't have to put in an envelope and partially because then they, you don't have to get them to open the envelope. Uh, so... Is there anything else going on through new residents? I mean, is this being added to something else? I don't think mm -hmm. so. I think so. Okay, so. But actually, this is not a bad thing to send out. It's got the tree permit, mm -hmm. pretty, pretty plain sight. You, you got to do it. Um, I know that I would not read that whole brochure that came to me in the mail. Sorry. I would not read it if it came to me in the mail yeah. as a brochure. So, but I usually will at least skim up, like both sides of the postcard and see if there's anything interesting on it. Um, so the least amount of action they have to take to consume the information. That's why I like the form factor postcards. They're also cheaper. And you can, if we update stuff on the website, you can always just the website. Yep, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm so, glad, glad you're still. Yes, it is on my radar. I haven't done it yet. You remember council member? With the terror, not terror kind, it's terror kind. Yeah, asked about that specifically at the last yep. council meeting. So, you know, it's an idea that's been around for a long time, and uh, realtors have different opinions about it. Some think it's a great idea, and some don't want to get into it. I think it's off putting to people about, you know, you move into a place that has a strict tree ordinance. But the thought occurs. Most of our utilities are done by other agencies like Seattle City Light or PSE, mm -hmm. but the one we do is sewer. Yep. And so presumably the city reaches out to homeowners to set up their billing for the sewer connection account. I would think so. It could be incorporated into that. So maybe by part. I, I, you know? We did that quite frequently in Snoqualmie took advantage of that billing and, and insert it. So you would just need to um, uh, summarize it and we would talk with finance and see what uh, invoicing or billing we do. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, and, and I mentioned you're talking about kind of as a general way to communicate to everybody. In addition to the Larry's idea that specifically new, 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 uh, oh, new customers, Oh, I thought it was. I thought it was. He was yeah. saying. He was saying that. Uh, they were saying they have to send something out to to, to set up a, a sewer billing account. There has to be something. It's not just a bill. That's you know. I guess I don't. I don't remember. But it's some so many so years. Yeah. Well, typically, an invoice is going out to a, a resident or owner, somebody that's that's a little uh, more specific than just broad throwing a press release out. So in that monthly billing. Um, they they have an opportunity to tastefully add materials that notify about community events, for instance. Yeah. It, and and it saves on uh, the eight cents or the four thousand dollars that it costs to do a citywide mailing. What about people who only pay their bill online? That like, it wouldn't I reach them. Yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't reach me at all because and, I um, like opted into the non-paper billing yeah yeah, yeah. snoqualmie is a little behind most of the most of the invoicing was paper to a mailbox uh. <laughs> I, I suppose what i was thinking was like how do you opt in you can't opt in opt in into online billing until you get your original notice right. that says oh you're in lake forest park now this is the sewage yeah. monthly bill and so that would get the people who have just moved here because yeah. no one has an online account Initially, yeah. so that, that, that's what I was thinking. Okay. Talking to someone there about 
what do they have that they reach out to new customers? Yeah, exactly. New, and, new I, and I do get paper bill. And I also have to say that I throw away the stuff that comes with my cross the envelope. Like I pay online, so I cross the envelope and I cross the paper and I keep the bill when I feel like paying the bill. I pay it. So I, I, I'm kind of with you. The stuff that's included there may get thrown away without being seen, but you know, whatever we can try to do to get people to be aware of this. If somebody down the hill from me is just hopping a tree, which is totally illegal, they for a part. I doubt they didn't know about it, but anything well, we can do to make people aware that we really do have these rules. So we're still we're still alive. We're still talk, we're talking about it. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> don't need to figure it out tonight, but uh, yeah. Yeah, well, once we get past some of the other pieces, I'll start thinking about potential drafting of something else and we can move forward on that. Reports and announcements. Normally, we're a council member gold and tell us what happened at the council meeting, but. Uh, well, I, yeah, what is the, what's the difference between seven and 10 on the agenda? 10 comes after seven. <laughs> I don't know. 10 was longer. Yeah, between seven and 10. They both predate me, I think, as chair. So I'm not, I've never been certain either. I think. Uh, 10 is usually where the council liaison has offered um, insight into what is relevant from council, count, recent council meetings. And the, the seven uh, was announcements about that would be of relevance to the board, like the new hire for urban forest planner or anything like that. Maybe we should switch the name to call that announcements, number seven announcements. And that might be good. Communications of me. Right, that sounds like a good arrangement. Maybe we should just make the, you know, I'd be happy if we collapse them into one. I think as our new chair, you I'll could report shake something up. Out. I think you could. <laughs> <laughs> we can change our agenda. That's right, Doug. You're going to be chair. You can make the agenda draft it however you want. <laughs> I'll just make an announcement. Up there. Maybe we'll make an announcement and have reports later. <laughs> because there is sometimes there is other things we want yeah. to go into more depth but other than just the quick announcements like the new arborist. Um, all right. Look into that. All right, agenda for the next meeting. Looks like the main thing is going to be to talk about the comprehensive plan. Um, and then we I just want to get an approval of the roles and responsibilities for do, do I need to do that for the Arbor Day? Like do we need to approve the the day of plan? I can just certainly we ought to, we ought to put it on the agenda. Yeah, okay. Final final planning. Yeah, the stuff will come up. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it must be on the agenda. Yeah. So that should be on the agenda. I'd love to hear a recap of just how the green fair goes as well. And we can put changes to the general tree list on the agenda. You know, see how it works out with the new arborist and what you know what exactly we want to do. Yeah. We view uh sounds like Mark, the arborist with uh, may be able to join us. Drew yes. May be able to join us next time. Or? Yes, absolutely. Great. Okay. Did you say earlier that part of her job will be to regularly attend our meetings? Yes. Okay, that's great. So we're going to start next meeting. Be wonderful. We'll be for the meeting. <laughs> All right. Is there any other business? Anybody want to go home? Yeah. I move we adjourn. Thank you. Mostly. All in favor? Aye. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank Have a good night. Take care. See you next month. Good job. Thank you. That was great. Elizabeth, do you have those notes for the starting point for the agenda? The starting point for the agenda, or do you want me to send them to you later, or what's what's uh, for the agenda for next for the agenda for next month? Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Stop recording now since the meeting is finished. What's already been about it? What's being stopped?